Yo, I am Eumonic, and you deserve to be creative. Welcome to the first video in a series of tutorials brought to you by BandLab, the mix editor for web, like computers, keyboard, mouse, screen, all that good stuff. I'm gonna show you how to use it so you can make more music. Let's go. Not only am I thankful that you are here, but I am stoked to be working with BandLab on this series of tutorials to help people make more music. I'm all about that, and BandLab is empowering millions of people all around the world with technology to do just that. If you're just getting started, you're in the right place. If you're familiar with BandLab, hopefully I'll highlight some features that you haven't seen before, maybe inspire you, because this is not just gonna be a monotonous tutorial. I got a really good idea for how we can conclude this at the end. So stick around. If at any point you do get inspired, hit the like button for me, that'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, questions, put them in the comments below. Now, in BandLab, to make music, it all starts when you click Create. And you are welcomed into the BandLab Mix Editor with colors and options, things that we all need more of in life. Now, I'm gonna be talking a lot about, you know, the buttons and the knobs and the little turny doodads in BandLab. Don't you mind about those, you'll figure them out. Stay focused on the tracks, which is where the creating happens, where the music making happens, where you're capturing your self-expression, your story, your creativity. And like I said, we're gonna get to the buttons, but let's focus on the tracks, starting with the instrument track. Instrument tracks in BandLab are virtual instruments that have been synthesized or sampled so you can play them on a keyboard, or a keyboard, or some type of MIDI controller. That stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So the musical instrument is virtual and we're controlling it with some type of digital device. Down at the bottom left, you have options that are applicable to the instrument track. Instrument, which is where the category and subcategories of all the different instruments can be found. For this, I chose strings and I went with a cello. Then under that is the MIDI device, and that's where you wanna make sure you have the right MIDI device selected that you will be using to control the virtual instrument. Then you have effects, that deserves a video in its own right. You can watch that one right here. And then the MIDI editor, which also deserves its own video, and you can watch that right here. Moving on. The drum machine in BandLab is colorful, accessible, and really easy and fun to use. If you notice, the MIDI editor button down at the bottom left is grayed out because we don't need to worry about MIDI. This is an interface that's built into BandLab. So the first option on the instrument tab is, once again, categories and subcategories of over 50 different drum machine banks. So they all have their own individual sounds. Speaking of those sounds, you can simply control them here. You have a simple step sequencer. And as you see when I play it, it'll step through the beat and wherever the colored dots are, that sound is gonna play. I have a very simple four on the floor drum snare pattern with a little snare on the one E and uh, on the uh of the third beat. One E and a two E and a one E and a. Anyway. Voice mic tracks. Shaker? Yes. It's an audio track. So you can record any sound that you want to. And look down at the bottom left once again, our options have changed. So you choose your input. For this, I used a simple USB microphone and channel one. Then you can choose monitoring, which BandLab will process your audio and send it back to you through your headphones or your speakers. Then you have effects once again. And it's worth noting that depending upon the track type, the effect presets available to you will be applicable for that type of track, at least to give you a start. But I highly encourage you getting to know the individual effects and making your own presets, which we'll talk about in a later video. In the audio editor, as you can see, there's this little white tab at the beginning and the end of this audio region. You can simply click and drag it and fade it in and out. So let's say you had a loop, maybe it was clipping at the beginning, so you just wanna fade that in a little bit. Or if you had 
a sound that you just wanted to fade out into a chorus or verse or some transition, you have options available here, pitch shift, playback rate, and you can reverse things as well. I'm not gonna reverse the shaker, the shaker sounds just fine. Guitar tracks, pretty self-explanatory. Took my golden ax back there and recorded this little ditty. It's an audio track, essentially. So the only thing that's gonna be different about it is the effects. These effects presets are going to be applicable to guitars. You know, you're gonna have something that looks like a guitar pedal chain or something that really brings guitars to life. For this, I chose the bright reverb and then messed with the EQ a little bit. It was a little heavy, so I turned down the lows. That was about it. Bass tracks. They're also audio tracks that have effects presets that are applicable to bass guitars. So the source isn't going to change, but I didn't mention it before, so it's worth noting now. There's a built-in tuner. So you go to source and click tuner, and you can tune your slap bass slapping machine. I didn't use any of those basses because I used my analog synthesizer to record the bass, and I added some distortion, as you can hear. And then I used the graphic EQ to cut out some of the mids because it was interfering with the guitar and the sample that I have in the next track. Import audio slash MIDI tracks is where you can grab files that you already have and use them in your BandLab projects. For this, I grabbed a sample. I was having a difficulty remembering what it was, but specifically this loop that I made it's called Hazy Memory. It's all coming back to me now. Guitar and keys, 100 beats per minute, F major. So I use this sample to be the foundation of the beat and I kind of built around it. Going back to the editor, as you can see, I use the fade in and fade out slider to make sure that there wasn't a clipping sound at the beginning of that sample. And then for the effects, the presets are a little bit more wide ranging. For this, I used a gain to turn it up and then a graphic EQ to shave off some of the low end. In BandLab, you can browse loops, a whole bunch of them, and then add them to your project really simply by just clicking and dragging them into your project. This really isn't a loop, it's more of a one-shot sample, but I used it to give it some little bit more atmosphere and space, added some reverb and some EQ. Okay, now let's circle back and talk about all those buttons that I was talking about. Starting at the top, the project name. If this was a new project, that's what it would say, but it says creators because that's what we all are. We are all creators. You simply click and you can name it whatever you want. No, no, I cannot do this. I cannot just talk about buttons for the next seven minutes. We gotta switch things up. Set the key F major, set the speed 100 and the time signature. I write 4-4 four, four. next is the click track tap in the tempo. Cowbell as a metronome? If this turns red, then slide it to the left. Save often and when you're ready to publish, click through this menu to get your music to the public. Down at the bottom right, yeah, there's a space to write. Browse loops and find inspiration. Invite friends through live collaboration. Customize the way you use your controller. That's cool, let's move in full circle. Exit? Nah, I'm not finished. File, download your tracks, a whole mix. Edit, cycle, a loop to keep vibing. Chop up sounds, click this to start slicing. Let loose a Keep it all on the grid. Did you just subscribe? Yes, yes, I did. I keep it compact so I can see my tracks. Theme set to dark because I chase the spark. Settings record on many tracks, automate effects. And if the audio lags, run the latency test. Help, that's what I'm here for. Rewind, run it back, and keep moving forward. Make more music, that is your reward. You were born to create. I can only show you the door. It's on you to walk through and push record. Okay, that was all kind of unexpected. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, if I did, that's okay because there's gonna be more tutorials like this coming every week for a good amount of time. If you don't wanna wait for the next video to drop, you can check out this playlist right here. It'll get you off to a good start, but the point isn't to watch more tutorials. The point is to make more music. Subscribe, you made it this far. Peace.